So watch this. The same thing, the same, the same fate has happened to the gospel, the real gospel. When you preach the real gospel of grace, you know what people say? He's compromising with sinners. Oh, you know, he's just saying it's okay to sin. That's exactly what they said of Jesus. Amen. See, the Pharisees are not saying, you know, how come Jesus is not teaching us, you know, how to commit adultery? How come Jesus is not teaching us how to lie? You know, no, they, they, they have a pretense to righteousness. They have a pretense that they are keeping the Ten Commandments. They have a pretense, but it's all self-righteousness. But notice the, the spirit of it. They are accusing Jesus as if they are custodians of holiness. What are they saying of Jesus? Oh, he's compromising. Oh, he's eating with sinners. Oh, you know, he called himself a man of God. He called himself a prophet. If he's a prophet, will he allow this woman to touch him? The woman who came and wept at his feet. So you look at their attitude. The same fate has befallen the gospel today. When you preach the true gospel, when you preach the true gospel, when you preach the true gospel, the devil will, he doesn't mind you preach a compromised gospel. He doesn't mind you preach another gospel. But the moment you preach the gospel of grace, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed, you preach that gospel, all hell break loose. Uh, scholars tell us probably very very early 20s even could be a late teen 18 19 but very very young prophets Zechariah and Haggai the messengers messengers of grace are young people and they stay young the messengers messengers of grace are young people and they stay young You know, he called himself a man of God. He called himself a prophet. If he's a prophet, will he allow this woman to touch him? The woman who came and wept at his feet. So you look at their attitude. The same fate has befallen the gospel today. Thank God for prophets, because Ezra, Ezra 6.14 says, So the elders of the Jews built, after the 15 years they built, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo, the two young prophets. No wonder they prospered. People like you, 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 you keep on hearing prophetic preaching and teaching. No wonder you are prospering. People like you, 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 you keep on hearing prophetic preaching and teaching. No wonder you are prospering. Yes, if you are not, you are on your way too. Yes, no wonder you are built up. If you are not, you are on your way up. Yes, Amen. You cannot sit under anointed teaching and not be built up and not prosper. Hyper-grace is exaggerated grace. People say, oh, you can never exaggerate grace. Of course you can. It's grace with addition. It's grace going beyond what the Word says. It's grace where you have to cut out whole portions of Scripture. It, it is a mixture. It is, it is polluted and distorted grace. Now, here's the thing. I don't call it counterfeit grace because there's a wonderful truth that many so-called grace preachers are bringing. And that truth is liberating people. It's setting them free from guilt and condemnation and legalism. They realize they're accepted because of what Jesus did and they're free. There's a wonderful truth, but it's preached with addition, with distortion, with exaggeration. So there's poison with it. Uh, what, are, what are you hearing around the world from this hyper-grace message? Well, I'm, I'm seeing such a reaction against holiness, such a reaction against hunger and thirst for God, because that's doing something. We don't have to do anything. We just rest. Jesus has done it all. The finished work of the cross means there's nothing left for me to do. 
they're, so they preach against repentance, they preach against conviction of sin, they preach against the need to confess our sins, and they, they preach against really an accountability in your own life. That's just legalism, that's just commandments. You're a grace hater, you're a law preacher, you're a Pharisee. That's what they're throwing you. So I see division, I, I see spiritual deception, I see people letting sin in their lives. Now here's what's interesting. The, the leading grace preachers, they will all say this is not a license to sin. They will all say grace empowers you not to sin. The problem is the other things they preach with it, the additions, the distortions, the mixture, the poison, it does give people a license to sin, and it takes away the dealings of God in our lives.